Welcome to the Copper King Mine and Railroad. Today we're going to talk about Utah Copper's beginning. They used underground mining at the beginning, and we're going to talk about that today. So, stay tuned! Beginning Utah Copper's Underground Mine We're starting with this wonderful picture. It was taken high above on the Boston Consolidated Open Cut Mining. The steam shovel front and center is part of that early digging. But what we're going to talk about today is way down below in the bottom of the canyon, Utah Copper's underground mining. From here, you can see the covered building that went from the mine to the large loading station, and then just a little glimpse of the town of Bingham. The year is easy because open cut mining started for Boston Consolidated in 1906. This was months before their rival, Utah Copper, started their open-cut mining, who is usually given credit for being the first. Let's go down and look at the bottom of the canyon and Utah Copper's underground mine. Now this picture is labeled the first steam shovel at Utah Copper. That took place August 1906. The arrow points out where that underground mine was. And then the other arrow will show that steam shovel high on the mountain, top right. This is where Utah Copper started their open cut mining. Both companies had a first strip away capping material or waste rock to reach their ore body. The first ores came from underground mining. That was both companies. The long covered building crossing the canyon went from the mine to the large loading station. Now here's a great view of that long building. This photo was taken in 1904, before open cut mining started. Utah Copper was incorporated June 4, 1903. It involves the history of two young mining engineers, Daniel Jacklin and Robert Gimmel. Property owners, Amos Wall, and investors, and a mountain of low-grade ore. It was Jacklin's idea to mass-produce copper from this low-grade ore, using steam shovels and trains. They will start with an underground test mine and build an experimental concentrator. Now here's a picture of that experimental concentrator, the Copperton Mill. Now we had a video on that Copperton Mill. That was really interesting. We have a lot of pictures in there. Back to our picture in the underground mine. The tunnel started September 1903. The first ore was extracted November 1903. First ore to the mill was delivered April 1904. To get a good sampling of the low-grade ore, they used a mining technique called stoping. A stope is an underground excavation for extracting ore in successive steps or ledges. This would remove a large amount of material. An interesting thing is that Boston Consolidated used the same method. The picture shows the collapse of their underground mine on the hillside behind their open cut operation. Back to Utah Copper's underground mine. We're going to show you pictures as time passed in this area. By 1907, stripping and capping of waste material was going full speed ahead. January 1st, 1907, underground mining development was suspended. Now, they had sufficient ore blocked out to last several years. The company announced that shovel to train operation had proven so satisfactory and economical that underground mining would be abandoned as soon as possible. By June 3, 1907, the mine had developed approximately 90,000 feet of underground workings. The ore came out of the mine, crossed the canyon into this covered long building, and then to a loading station, where it would be put into railroad cars and delivered to the Copperton Mill. It was transported to the mill by the Copper Belt Railroad. They used Shea steam engines on that line. Denver Rio Grande Railway purchased the Copper Belt Railroad in 1905. Concentrate from the Copperton Mill was smelted at Bingham Consolidated Smelter, and that was in Midville. They used the smelter until the completion of the large Asargo smelter out in Garfield, and that was in 1906. From the mine to the loading station, here's a photo of that first loading station, 
Then they will build a much larger loading station. Here is pictures of that construction. So let's show some more pictures of that bigger loading station. Note how many rails are going into it. Now I think I count about six. The picture shows that unique S-curved bridge. It will remain a notable fixture at the mine for a long time. Also, across the way, the building on stilts was Utah Copper's office building number two. It will later be destroyed by fire. Note the man to the right looking over the operations. Over time, they'll dig around the old underground workings. They will even use the tunnel entrance to access the open cut mining. Here's a picture of the train going into that old tunnel entrance. Then look at this great picture. This is from the other side where the open cut mining was taking place. Now this spot will eventually be opened up into a large gap and then be totally eaten away like everything else in the mine. So here's some photos of that large gap. Now it's been over a hundred years since underground mining was at Bingham Canyon. Now inside the pit, they're starting it up again. So here's some pictures of that underground mining 2022. So that's the beginning of Utah Copper and their underground mine.